In today's video, we'll be talking about stress. Stress is a term we use all too often and have a general idea of what it is. For example, you could say you were having a stressful day at work or school and most people will understand what you were talking about. But in this video, we'll be diving a bit deeper into exactly what it means and how the body deals with it. The term stress is also used in physics to refer to the interaction between a force and the resistance to counter that force. For example, you can think of a force on a rope as it's being pulled in opposite directions. The tension within the center of the rope is the stress it encounters. Over time, if continuous stress is applied to the rope, it could eventually result in a break in the rope and this is the danger with chronic stress. Stress as it's currently used was first coined by Hans Sale in 1936 a Hungarian-Canadian endocrinologist known as the father of stress research. He defines stress as the non-specific response of the body to any demand for change. In medicine, the term stress can be very difficult to quantify because it is highly subjective. For example, a patient presenting to the hospital complaining of feeling extremely stressed, a combination of both subjective and objective data is typically required by the healthcare provider to assess the severity of the stress level. For example, the patient would typically describe in their own words how bad the stress level has been and the presence or absence of any other symptoms associated with the stress, such as headache, blurry vision, or shortness of breath. While the healthcare provider measures some objective data, such as heart rate or blood pressure to get a better idea of the severity of the stress level. Stress can be classified as acute stress or chronic stress. Acute stress are short-term stress and they are typically dealt by our nervous system. The body's nervous system is comprised of the sympathetic and parasympathetic system. The sympathetic system, also known as our fight or flight, helps us when we encounter dangerous situations. When we encounter any stressful situation, the sympathetic nervous system also kicks in, increasing our heart rate to deliver more oxygen, dilates our pupils of our eyes to let more light in, and increases our breathing rate send them blood to vital organs to either help us fight or run away from the stressful or dangerous situation. The parasympathetic nervous system is our rest or digest system, and this has the opposite role of the sympathetic nervous system. It functions to increase digestion, slow down our heart rate and breathing, and works in tandem with the sympathetic nervous system to ensure the body remains in balance. The activation of the sympathetic nervous system is beneficial in dealing with acute and short-term stress as it optimizes our ability to handle such stressful situation. But it then becomes a problem if that stressful situation is not controlled because chronic stress kicks in. Dr. Hans Sale argued that chronic stress can be divided into three phases. The alarm reaction phase, the stage of resistance, and the stage of exhaustion. The alarm reaction phase is when an individual is exposed to chronic stress. What happens is they're first taken off guard, resulting in the body sending off various signals, resulting in this alarm reaction. Then an attempt to resist leads into the second phase, which is the stage of resistance. During this stage, the body resists the chronic stress in an attempt to maintain it a balance, known as homeostasis. But if that fails, then we eventually fall victim to the third and final phase, known as the stage of exhaustion. And this is when all efforts by the body to maintain balance fails. There are different ways to handle stress. The primary focus should be on first identifying the source of the stressor then try to find ways to either eliminate or decrease the persistent stressor. If this fails, then try to remove yourself from the stressful environment or situation. The second way is performing activities that help calm the persistent firing of the sympathetic nervous system and instead activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Such activities include breathing techniques, meditations, exercise, positive reinforcement talk, and overall doing things that you enjoy. And then thirdly, it is important to seek professional help if all else fails, because the overall aim should be to prevent the stage of exhaustion from ever occurring. Let me know in the comments how you cope with stress. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Bye.